In this Cardano update, I've got some research on the competitive landscape for ADA. I'm going to be looking at exchanges, NFTs, and some other projects that are launching and how they compare in terms of their users and use case and some actual facts and figures now that we've, you know, got working applications on Cardano. So if you do hold Cardano, you know, I would suggest watching the video. As we can see, Cardano is still in the top 10 at number eight. The price action is not great though. Let's be honest about it. You know, when we see, you know, coins like Polygon and Ethereum um, pumping a little bit, right, recently, we are still having a big downtrend for ADA. So, you know, is this going to continue or are applications actually launching to potentially see us reverse? Before we get into the video, BitGet are doing uh, insane deposit bonuses right here. They're doing spot deposit bonuses. So if you um, deposit some spot on the platform, they'll give you a deposit in your spot account. If you trade futures, they're giving up to $8,000 there as a futures trading bonus. I'll leave the link in the description. You can see all of the different bonuses. I'll get onto exchanges first then. How do Cardano exchanges actually compare up to the other ecosystems that are around them. Now, remember Cardano is a top eight ecosystem, right? So we are valued at number eight, 12 billion, more than Solana, more than Polkadot, more than Polygon, uh, and then, you know, quite a way under BNB and Ethereum. So, you know, what happens on Cardano is going to provide that long-term value. So where do we stand in terms of Cardano versus the others? These for me are the top applications, the top exchanges across crypto. So obviously you've got Uniswap, this is kind of the gorilla of the bunch, right? It's the silverback. There really is no competitor to Uniswap. And you can see this here by all the data. So Uniswap really is the absolute king and it has many versions of itself as well. So you've got Uniswap V3, which is kind of the, you know, the main, um, the main uh, market share grabber. They have 41% of the market, just that V3 and Uniswap. So that is amazing. And obviously, you know, probably can't compete with that. Um, but as you can see, Uniswap have other versions as well. So Uniswap on Polygon is doing really, really well. Polygon has a massive advantage of being that scaling layer for Ethereum. You have the Polygon proof of stake chain, which is just completely separate, but you have ZK technologies that are coming on that Uniswap wanna launch on as well, right? So, you know, Polygon has this access to liquidity and is kind of really one of the main, uh, you know, the main, offshoots for scaling for Ethereum and lowering those fees. You can see they're right up there with $100 million of volume. You've got Uniswap on Arbitrum, Uniswap v2, and then Uniswap on Optimism, which is another scaling solution. Uniswap is a real killer here, right? So it's kind of difficult to compete here, but then you have PancakeSwap on Binance Smart Chain. Again, this shows me, um, so for Uniswap, by the way, what's that, like a billion dollars in volume per day, right? So that's a lot of volume and that just, means to me that there are many users here that need to do things, right? You trade because you're either investing or whatever else and you need to trade. And so an ecosystem that has a ton of trading volume tells me that there's a lot of users that are actually using this thing because of a, a use case that they want and need. And it tells me that there's a lot of people and a lot of value here. And that makes sense. Ethereum is, you know, number two, right? So PancakeSwap, again, this is on Binance Smart Chain doing $100 million worth of trade a day. That is big as well. And that also tells me that, you know, there's a lot of people on Binance Smart Chain. Now, if you go deeper into the figures, you'll see that Binance Smart Chain and specifically PancakeSwap has actually a lot more users, but each of those trades are much smaller amount. So each trade is much smaller. And that makes sense because Binance Smart Chain ho um, hosts a lot of crypto games and kind of, you know, uh, very easy to play games that they might have NFTs or smaller tokens on. And so there's a lot of smaller trading on PancakeSwap. What's really great for me though, actually, um, is that MinSwap is now on the list here. And this is, I think, the first um, decentralized exchange on Cardano to actually make the list. And if we just go down here, we're still a way away. Now, what I wanna do is compare something like MinSwap to the competition, which would be, um, let's say, Solana DEXs. So you've got Radium here, um, and you know that's kind of the main one on Solana. So Solana is around the same size in market cap as Cardano. And so that would be a competitor where you'd want to see decentralized exchanges on Cardano potentially have the same amount of trade. That isn't the case for right now, as we can see, we're number 62. Now, I think this is really good for ADA and MinSwap. MinSwap is a great deck. So I made a tutorial a tutorial on this the other day. You can see it, I'll link it in the description. A fantastic DEX, um, but it does have some downsides in terms of the amount of assets that it holds right, that you can trade on there. There's no wrapped Bitcoin on Cardano. There's no stable coins on Cardano, which I'll get onto. And so this is a good start, I believe. 
and we need this to be higher, right? So as, a, as an ecosystem, Cardano is around number eight, but certainly by DEX trading volume, it's suggesting that there's fewer people and fewer, fewer things going on on Cardano. So that's just where I see things, but there's a lot of room to grow here for a couple of reasons. The first is most people trade stable coins, wrapped Bitcoin, and then the layer one token or coin of the uh, blockchain. And so stable coins and wrapped Bitcoin has yet to come. When they do come, are we going to be seeing this actually start rising through the ranks? I believe so for a few reasons. One of them, which I'll constantly touch on in this video is Cardano is a strong, reliable blockchain. Using MinSwap is a pleasure and it's simple and easy and it goes through and it's reliable and actually quite cheap as well. And we'll get onto this in a second actually as well uh, for what Sunday Swap are doing, which is a massive improvement. This is MinSwap as you can see here. And what you will see is that there are no stable coins. This is like running a race against Uniswap and PancakeSwap with your ankles tied together. The entire market wants to trade against stable coins and a decentralized exchange makes money from trading volumes. And if you don't have stable coins, what are people trading against? And so I believe this is trying to run a race against the competition here where you can see quick swap, sushi swap, MM finance, all of these, which are, you know, kind of mid level in terms of um, trading volumes and everything. Serum decks as well on Solana. These all have stable coins, right? And that's what people trade against. And MinSwap doesn't, and it's what at number 60. So when stable coins eventually make its way to Cardano, I think that's actually a, a really uh, going to be a really good time that we might see some higher trading volumes. I also want to touch on this update from Sunday Swap as well, who are developing Hydra for their DEX, which is a scaling solution. So trying to get faster transactions, and obviously for a DEX, that's pretty important. As you can see here um, on the right hand side, when they press confirm swap, the network essentially processes this almost instantly, as good as instantly. So you press swap and the thing's done already. This is obviously a very important use case for a DEX. You wanna swap instantly. This looks to be happening on Hydra. So this is a great use case and something that is um, potentially very important for not just Sunday swap, but this is obviously going to come out across Cardano. This is one of the advantages of Cardano, I believe, is some of these scaling solutions that you can get with the, the UTXO model versus the account-based model. Ethereum has scaling as well, but as you can see, everything is going to be converging to fast and cheap transactions. So if every blockchain has fast and cheap transactions, then that's not a potential use case that will draw users in to you versus someone else. And so what we're looking at here is other things that are gonna be drawing users in. And for me, that's community, decentralization and a focus on some core values. And I think Cardano does that pretty well versus a lot of other chains, in my opinion anyway. Now I wanna to touch on stable coins. Cardano doesn't have stable coins on its ecosystem. This is completely unacceptable for me. You have a financial operating system without access to the world reserve currency that every single thing on the planet is priced against, the US dollar. And this is, like I said, like running a race with your ankles tied together. It is impossible to win or even compete against other chains when you don't have stable coins. US dollar tether, when it came in, exploded the market for Bitcoin because people want to trade things against the US dollar and that exploded the market for crypto and Bitcoin. You can see stable coins on Ethereum, on every other smart contract chain that is competing with ADA, having stable coins right now. And it is unacceptable for me that ADA and Cardano or IROHK or whoever is in charge of this does not have a business development team who are focused on getting US dollar tether and US dollar coin on Cardano right now. How can anyone trade against ADA? They, they don't want to trade against ADA. They want to trade against US dollar stable coins. And I'll prove that to you right now with this data. So this is what each blockchain is making. I think this is a good idea about telling you which applications or blockchains are the most successful. Ethereum, Uniswap and Binance Smart Chain. They have a lot of users. They have a lot of trade, which we've seen. And they make it easy for people to do what they want to do, which is trade against stable coins. Um, now, as we can see, Cardano is right down here, making not much right now. And so I think this needs to improve. And it's an opportunity to get stable coins on to see this moving up, giving some fundamental value to ADA. And that would uh, help with the price as well. As we can see, Tether, USD coin, Binance USD, absolutely huge. They make up the vast majority of the market. Look at the trading volume, $35 billion a day in trading volume. Do you not want to tap into some of that trading volume? Well, it, it, you should be able to do that 
and Cardano needs US dollar tether on its system. It needs to put it on there as a native coin, not a bridged coin, anything like that. Bridged bridges get hacked. You don't want those. You just want a absolutely um, solid stable coin. Both of these, even Binance coin, should be on here as a stable coin. Now I want to look at Dai as well. Dai is an algorithmic stable coin that is. Uh, it's actually a crypto backed stable coin. So it has a lot of ETH, but it also has uh, basically a lot of USD coin in there. So DAI as a stable coin has a lot of USD coin backing it and also some ETH as well. And you can actually have different uh, makeups of it in terms of what crypto assets are backing the DAI, but it's over collateralized. Okay. So the market cap here is about $6 billion in circulation and it has more than that backing its value because crypto is very volatile. Cardano is doing a very similar thing here with Jed, but as you can see, it's a niche market. Even on Ethereum, which is the main ecosystem, you've got Dai at number four. It's a niche player. Okay, it doesn't have a lot of trading volume, and so Jed is not the answer for me for Cardano. USDT and USDC are the answer, and even BUSD. They have more trading volume, and that is what people trade against because they're one for one backed. This is really important. You can see MinSwap no stable coins and that's what people want to trade against you also have wing riders here which is like the second deck second or third decks no stable coins what are you supposed to trade against ada is too volatile as an asset to trade against or to provide liquidity for um, and so you're just not going to get liquidity and volumes in here and that is um, you know the ankles tied together uniswap you can see the top tokens right here i'll go over the past year you can see the top tokens usdc tether Die. And then you have Bitcoin, wrapped Bitcoin, and of course Ethereum on ETH. And you have Fay USD in the top seven as well. So people want to trade against stable coins. This is an opportunity for Cardano to actually put these on, and it's holding them back right now, in my opinion. Something that has surprised me though is the strength of the NFT ecosystem on Cardano. I think there's a few reasons for this. First is that the community is genuinely there and is enjoying this ride. The second though is technology. I think Cardano the way it's built really lends itself to issuing assets. That's not a coincidence. That's what Cardano is for. Cardano is for issuing digital assets. So not just having ADA itself as a store of value, but having uh, a blockchain that you can issue anything on. They're really strong on NFTs, on DIDs, you know, on licenses, and they're, they're working with that. So it's no, um, it's no surprise to me that NFTs are really flourishing here because the system is made for this. So you can see the uh, trading volumes huge on JPEG store, um, really leading the way here. JPEG store is an amazing application. Like it just looks good. It's easy to use. It's, it's awesome. And um, I'm not surprised that they're succeeding as well. Really big volumes here. Now it's actually starting to suck in a lot of uh, creators from other platforms. And I'll talk about that now as well. As you can see, bro, sell projects are dumping into oblivion. And I just found out Cardano NFTs are making all time highs. So we're all moving to Cardano NFTs now or what? Just a couple of tweets. So you know, not much to read into here, but if you look at the trading data, it's definitely showing that, well, NFTs on Cardano are essentially at an all time high right now in terms of trading volume, which I think is really important. One of the reasons here, I, I think as well, is that Magic Eden, which itself is a really good app and um, has been really popular a couple of days or maybe a week ago, they actually decided to take uh, royalties away. So they were optional, which means people didn't have to pay royalties to creators. Now, I believe this is because of the way that the blockchain is used and it's difficult to actually have the royalties as uh, on chain. And so it's difficult for creators to actually enforce the royalties. As you can see here, Magic Eden, after some difficult reflections, um, we've decided to move to optional royalties. That means that People can trade these things without paying the creator. Now, if you're a creator, you deserve to be paid for your work and you deserve a blockchain that actually lets you do that, right? And so potentially, if you're a creator, if you're creating art, where are you going to choose to put your art on? Probably a place that's going to give you some royalties because that's what you deserve, right? Whether it's five or 10% or whatever, but you know, uh, on Cardano, as far as I'm aware, it's, it's easy to actually have those royalties built in. And so you don't have to worry about uh, chains taking them away. And that would definitely, in my opinion, have a lot of creators come over to, you know, not because it's Cardano, but just because the system is actually favorable to them. And so you can see even in a bear market, uh, NFT trading volumes are at an all time high. So I think the NFT market on Cardano is really great. Not really my area of expertise in terms of the JPEGs, but if you have a system built that actually um, is beneficial for the people that create these things, then you're going to attract a lot of people. I want to shout out this site as well, NMKR. Absolutely fantastic site. 
Um, it's great tooling for creators as well. You can actually press mint NFT here and it just takes you like step by step doing it. You don't even need to know too much techno like technology on the background. You can mint a collection or a single NFT, whatever you want. Just keep pressing next and upload your, uh, your images and your data and it does it all for you, which I think is a great tooling. It's gonna make making NFT so much easier for everyone. And looking forward, there's a couple of apps that I really want to see. I'm definitely going to use myself as well. One is Meld and one is AxoTrade. They were called Maladex before they've changed their name to AxoTrade. These are probably not coming until next year, but you can see the roadmap has been updated for Meld. The time is now. If you take a look at their roadmap right here, I'll actually go back to the tweet because they have it. The launch of the DAP, probably Q1 next year. Launch and DeFi wallet, tier one exchange listing. This is good news. Meld is a lending and borrowing protocol. You need these in your ecosystem. So um, really looking forward to this. And actually, if you see the team at Meld, this is a really big team. This is not a joke um, application or anything or a copy paste. This is a, a really strong team. You can see the amount of people working for Meld is actually incredible. So I'm really looking, mean, it's so many people, but I'm really looking forward to this application. Lending and borrowing uh, on Cardano. Cardano is a very reliable chain. And so I'm looking forward to actually using this myself, lending and borrowing, um, and also Axo Trade as well. There are some things here that you just don't see on decentralized exchanges a lot, which is the opportunity to trade futures and options. This looks like a proper professional trading system, which on most um, decentralized exchanges, you don't really get. I and mean, they can obviously upgrade, but they're bringing the heat Axo Trade, in my opinion. You can see. Um, you can do limit orders, you can do dollar cost averaging, and this is on chain, you know, not on a centralized exchange. You can trade volatility here. These are different products that they're going to be introducing. And then futures, options, and indexes, actually indexing different parts of the market, but decentralized on the Cardano blockchain. That's really awesome. And, you know, it's going to have a much wider use case for a lot more people. So these are some interesting um, applications that may be launching start of next year um, that should hopefully, again, we need it to just bring people into ADA and Cardano to give some fundamental demand and value to ADA. There are some really bright shoots for Cardano. Some of the applications are really great and that's because of how Cardano was designed. They need stable coins in order to compete with everyone around them that has them because that's where all the trade and value is. Make sure to get your deposit bonus on BitGet as well. They're doing a spot deposit bonus and futures deposit bonus plus commission fee trading on all spot pairs right now. I think it's a really good deal. Check that link in the description for details. I'm James with MoneyZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.